good? I'm good. Uh, yeah, thanks, Coach. Uh, first off, good seeing you. Congratulations. I know I didn't get to talk to you after the Patriot League Championship, but how does the team assess, you know, playing an Arkansas team? Do you feel like you're playing with house money now? You know, you, you accomplished one goal, or do these guys still feel like there's some unfinished business left? Uh, I think there's been excitement for this group, um, you know, literally 300 and I don't know, 70 days ago when, when everything ended in such rapid fashion and they vacated campus and got back to their, their homes. I, I think the first thing that they all thought about once they knew, you know, their, their immediate families and, and they were, you know, healthy and safe was, you know, what, what do we need to do to get back together um, to try and, and, and do whatever we can to uh, get ready for the future. And so that's been their mentality from, yeah, uh, you know, for a long, long stretch here, and I think that um, that continues to be their mentality: is what What is the next opportunity that we have, and what do we need to do? Uh, I don't think it's house money. Uh, I think that there, you know, a number of these guys had a chance to to do this and play against a phenomenal Tennessee team uh, a couple years ago, and and so and did really well. You know, that game went right down to the wire, uh, and I think that they're excited. Um, to continue to learn about Arkansas and to prepare as, as we have for the other the other opponents uh, on, that have been on our schedule this season. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Nico, yep. are you all set? I am all set. Thank you, Jordan. And Coach, uh, great to see you as well, and uh, glad you guys got safely to Indy. You, you kind of led perfectly into this question here, the experience against Tennessee in 2019, where you, you honestly almost had it. Um, what did that show the guys, especially the upperclassmen on your team, about the experience, you know, of, of March Madness and, and going against, uh, again, again, another SEC team here in Arkansas? Yeah, I mean, a big part of being uh, the, uh, the team who hasn't played against, uh, you know, a, a, as much length uh, and speed and athleticism um, and, you know, uh, high level uh, talent across the board is adjusting to uh, the pace of the game, the speed of the game, the size of the opposition. Uh, I think this group, certainly those who experienced that a couple of years ago, uh, that helps just like, you know, when you play against Syracuse during the, the regular season, that, that helps you understand, you know, that the guy you're going against, you know, if he sticks his arms out, he's going to deflect a pass that, you know, the guy in your conference isn't going to deflect. So, you know, I think that certainly um, will, will help in that, uh, environment. I think it's helped us, you know, every day since then. The, the guys have an understanding uh, and a confidence uh, and a connectedness that when they play together, um, it, they're capable of of playing with anybody that there is. Uh, every game's different, though. Every game takes on its own personality, and they're they're also aware of that. So, you know, I think it'll be critical to find the rhythm of of Friday afternoon's game and and try and get adjusted as quickly as possible. Thank you, Coach. Uh, all right, Mike. Let's go with Bob Holt here from Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Yeah, it's not not political. It's just the name of the paper. <laughs> but uh, hey, Coach, congratulations. Um, Thanks, Bob. Hey, uh, Jordan Burns. I got to admit, I didn't know a whole lot about him, but I know he torched Tennessee for thirty-two. I know he's a hell of a player. Uh, how would you, do, if you were given a scout report, obviously without giving away secrets, what, how would you describe him? And uh, the fact he lit up Tennessee. You know, what what does that tell you? Yeah, I mean, it tells me he's a he's an extremely talented guy. I think you've you've got one of them in 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 JD Note if I'm saying his pronouncing his name correctly. He, uh, you know, Jordan is is you know he's he, he was recruited where he was because he's not the tallest guy. He's not, you know, he, he's not the most athletic guy, but he's a terrific basketball player and he's been able to score um, points at, uh, in all, all different circumstances. Uh, broke the assist record at Colgate University. Um, but besides his talent and his abilities to, you know, shoot from behind the basket, get to the rim, has a great mid-range game, uh, involve his teammates. Um, he, he's got some intangibles that you, you just don't find in young people all the time. I mean, I think the guys rally around his confidence, uh, certainly his work ethic. He's improved immeasurably over his career. Uh, and, you know, we're lucky in today's day and age. I think a lot of guys like him would have um, said, you know what, I, I, people missed out on me. I'm going to take my game and go somewhere else. And so, 
you know, there have been games where, you know, he, he has been able to score 30 or, or more points, but there's also been games where, you know, he's really helped us win by getting 11 or 13 and six or seven or eight assists and a couple steals and, you know, doing a lot of other things. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're really lucky to have him. And, you know, it's, it's not a coincidence that we've been to four straight championship games in our conference in large part because of uh, he's, he's the guy with the ball in his hands a lot of the time. You brought up Note. He's actually he was a sixth man of the year in the SEC. He only played, he only started one game at Auburn. He really didn't play very well. And you know, Eric, you know, he's a transfer portal guy. You know, he was at Jacksonville. You probably know. And um, you know, Eric's been harping on his shot selection and defense and passing and all this. And he seems to finally have really played well these last a few games. Uh, well, what have you seen from Note? And what what kind of challenge could he be the way he's been playing of late? Yeah, I mean, I think he's a dynamic talent. You know, if you just watch in the Missouri series of, of games, for example, you know, one game he's he's kind of quiet and a lot of other guys, you know, helped them to, to victory in that game. But the I think the last one he might have had, what, did he have 26 in that game? It was actually um, 27. You know, yeah. 27. So, you know, he can go off, um, you know, go off on, on you know, his, his own explosive scoring ability. So I think it just, it speaks to his talent. He's a dynamic player. And, you know, he can get going shot selection, you know, good shots, go, good shots are the ones that go in the basket a lot of the times. And he can, he can, you know, create for himself and his teammates and, you know, he can single-handedly going to change the, change the tide of the game. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but the last time Arkansas played a Patriot League team in a tournament 2006 was Bucknell. Bucknell beat Arkansas in Dallas and what essentially was like a home game for Arkansas. Um, is that, is that something you're aware of? Is that something you talk to your kids about? Yeah, that's a long time ago. I think we might have, uh, you know, we, we've got some guys who didn't even know what the NCAA tournament was and when that when that game happened, probably. But, um, you know, it's certainly – and I think if you go back and look, there's that, that game was probably in the 50s. Um, it was, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that, you know, that, that Bucknell team was really good. I think that's the similar comparison, that they had some really good guards who could, you know, make some three-point shots and, and control the tempo of the game and – uh, I, I, I remember watching that game uh, myself as I was just getting into coaching. But, uh, you know, we I think our guys have been in enough games, whether it was, you know, winning at Cincinnati last year or the Tennessee game or, you know, the games that they've played against Syracuse at the Dome over the years that, um, you know, they, they understand that if they can execute and do the job and um, that that we can we can play with anybody. Yeah, I got a couple more, but I'll, I'll turn it back to the beat guys. Thank, thank, thank you, Coach. Thanks, Bob. Um, Mark Larson with Spectrum. Yep, uh, thank you. Hey, Coach, I uh, hope you had a chance to check out one of those movies that I told you about. Um, <laughs> Not yet, Mark. Not yet. Okay, I know you're busy. Um, so you just mentioned uh, your team's played in, in big games before. Uh, so you have experience. Uh, you have that special player uh, like Jordan Burns. You guys make your free throws. You're disciplined. You're smart. Uh, you've, you've been in tournaments, you, you've coached, you've seen a lot of tournaments. What do you think it takes to be that Cinderella team or, or to make that run, to, to pull that upset? And do you think your team has that? Uh, I think it takes everything that you just mentioned. And, and then it takes, you know, a, a certain bit of luck. Like, um, you know, the game has to go uh, in, in a manner that, you know, the ball's going in the basket for you. Um, you know, you're avoiding foul trouble at, at critical positions and maybe, you know, the other, the other team isn't, you know, they, they, they're there. And then they start to press a little bit or feel, feel the, the stress of the game. I think that, you know, there's a, there's a lot goes into, um, you know, I, I like to tell our guys, the game is extremely fragile and, you know, a, a game uh, changes on a single play or a single call. And so, you know, you can't always control that, but what you can control is putting your best foot forward and sticking to, you know, a game plan and the principles and, and believing in yourselves and one another. And so uh, I do think that, you know, again, if you, if you play the right game and it happens to be the right day that, you know, it's, it's the magic of this tournament is, is going through that. And, you know, we've all seen it plenty of times. So I, I certainly think that our depth and that different guys have showed up that we don't draw a lie on ju just one guy or just one, one, one thing to have success is, is uh, positions as well. All right, here we go with uh, Steve from Associated Press. 
Thank you. I was just wondering, both you and Arkansas like to play at a pretty fast pace. I was just wondering, first, what, what, what's gone into your philosophy about playing, at, playing kind of an up-tempo style? And is there any concern about this particular matchup or if you play at that fast pace, you're kind of, that maybe you're playing into Arkansas's hands a little bit or how much of a concern is that? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a large concern. I'll, I'll answer the first part of the question first, Steve. I, I think that, um, you know, w- we believe our, our coaching philosophy is that this is a player's game. And so, you know, as coaches, we, we were all former coach, uh, players. Uh, we need to take the guys that we have and try and best position them for success. It so happens that, um, you know, this group that we have now, we have a number of talented guards, experienced guards. We have some depth at the guard position. And so, and multiple guys who can um, not just handle the ball to get it down the court, but are good decision makers. And so, you know, we, we decided early on as we were working with them that, you know, it, it's certainly easier to attack a defense that's backing up on their heels and trying to transition the floor than it is a defense that's, you know, set in their coverages and, and go from there. And the other thing is no young people want to walk the ball down the court uh, in today's day and age and look over and say, Hey coach, what play are we running? And me to put up run play number five option two side, like that's, that's not fun. And I, I find that players do better when they're enjoying uh, what they're doing. So, but in order to do that for us, um, you know, I don't know how much you budget our, our defense has to be there. And I think that a big part of, um, you know, our scoring and our, our, our possessions, you know, high, high number of possessions and playing fast has been that we've been able to stop the opposition. You know, we're not one of those teams that when the other team makes a basket that we're, we're firing it in bounds and flying it down the court and scoring in, in the first seven seconds. That's not, that's not how we're built. Um, so, you know, I think that Arkansas has been in a number of games in that way that they're, they're trying to get up and down and up and down and up and down makes and misses in, in every, every scenario. So I think that's where, um, our, our, you know, the numbers identify us as similar in that capacity, but I think style of play is, is slightly different. Um, uh, so, but uh, obviously if we can't stop them, it's going to be hard for us to play, to, to, to get transition opportunities. So, uh, and I think that if they're able to get up and down and up and down and attack the basket and, uh, and get a lot of early th- open three point shots, then, then certainly that's, that doesn't play into our hands. Fred Donna Detona from Syracuse. Post hey, Dan, how are you? Hey, Donna. Uh, I've got a question. You know, you talked a little bit about Cinderella's, and generally speaking, what Cinderella's need in this tournament is to have a little bit of depth. You have to have an ability if somebody gets in foul trouble or if somebody turns an ankle or something, and, and that's something you guys have had this year. Could you speak a little bit to the depth of your team? Yeah, thanks for that. Um, you know, I and you've watched over the last decade. I, I traditionally have not played ten players. Um, more like you know six and a half to seven maybe maybe an eighth guy gets a couple of minutes Uh, but we've got a lot of deserving guys and so you know I I had a deal uh, and I didn't have the non-league you know schedule and exhibitions and scrimmages and and non-league games to try and figure it out you know but we we played 10 guys in in game one and and we have um, ever since and so I, I do think that that's important the other thing that it's important is you know, for us that, you know, Jordan Burns and Nellie Cummings and Tucker Richardson, you know, in the past that they've played 35, 36, 37 minutes, um, that wears on any player there. I mean, they all want to play that. I've had to deal with them being like, coach, I'm ready to go back in. I'm ready to go back in. But I do think that, you know, the bench play, whether it's Jeff Woodward at the center spot, Oliver Lynch Daniels on the perimeter, it's, it's changed our look too. You know, we're not, they're not all the same players. Uh, and we play a little bit different when different guys are in the game. So I, I think it's given us some some depth, but also some versatility in how we play. And it, it's been a big part of, of our season for sure. Thanks, Doug. And you're good with Jeff the rest of the way? Yeah, we're good with Jeff. All right, thanks. Hey, Matt, good to see you. Um, up, speaking Josh? of Jeff, I know you guys had high expectations for him coming in. How do you feel like he performed his freshman year? Yeah, uh, he's um, he's one of the most unique uh, players that I've I've come across. Uh, I think uh, what makes him unique as a player is really his comfort with with himself at a young age of who he is off the court. I think he you know you you know him as well as anybody, but he's like a, a super intelligent guy who's also a big goofball, uh, and he has no problem hamming it up with the older guys and. Uh, and asking the coaches difficult questions or recommend making a recommendation on the court to a, a coach. And he's usually right, which speaks to his 
best asset as a basketball player is his intelligence. And you don't usually say that about guys who are 6'9", 6'10", 260 pounds. Uh, he sees the game a play ahead. Uh, he, you don't have to tell him things twice. He, he really has been a, a, a sponge in his, in his learning curve, which is incredible for first-year guys. Um, and he's, he's an extraordinary passer. I think that, uh, again, on, for, a, for a young guy to come in, and Keegan Records was all rookie team uh, and all conference tournament for Jeff to come in. And there's been games where we had him out there to finish the game uh, because of the type of game he's having. He, he's given us a, a super boost and a, a legitimate, you know, for us in the Patriot League, you know, we've got two guys who are 6'10", 240, 6'10", 260. Like, you put those two guys' numbers together, and from the center spot, we've got a first-team all-league uh, performance day in, day out. So you know, he's been he's been a huge part of that. Yeah, when you guys don't have someone seven three, uh, what's the specific <laughs> challenge for uh, you know guarding Van over? Yeah, he's a unique guy. Obviously, at seven three with his length and his three point shooting, uh, it's something that you know we'll introduce to our guys on film. Um, you know, presents some some schematic problems. We've played against some pick and pop guys, but but not necessarily at that position at that size. So. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a, something that's a little bit unique in how he's able to protect the rim. Um, but our, again, our guys have been extremely good learners um, and and prepared uh, extraordinarily well based on the game plan uh, and the film and the preparation. And I, I would anticipate that they'll they'll be ready to do the same um, for Friday's game. Thanks, Matt. We've got time here for, for just a few more. We'll try to get to everyone here. Um, we can start with uh, Kevin Fielder from fifth quarter. Hey, coach. Uh, thanks for taking the time out of, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure a busy schedule. But, you know, those those last two games uh, in the conference tournament, you guys really hit your threes well. And, you know, going into a, a tournament like this, how important is it for you guys to carry that momentum uh, against a good Arkansas team? Yeah, I mean, it sounds cliche and it's kind of obvious, but I don't care who you are. Um, if, if, if you're going to win in this tournament and, 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 you know, achieve your dreams, and all, you have to make shots. Like no, nobody, nobody does well in March if they're not making shots. And certainly the way we're built, we, we, we have to make shots in order to play our best because, um, you know, we don't, doesn't have to just be three point shots. We're going to try and take what the defense gives us but we do have a lot of guys who can make three point shots and we like to move the ball. And, and if we can shoot an open three point shot, um, that's what we want to do. If it doesn't go in, it's going to be a difficult challenge to find a way to win the game. You certainly have to make shots uh, and be consistent in, in making shots to you know, be, be where we want to be on uh, Friday afternoon, late in the game. Appreciate that coach. All right. We've got Scott from Maroon news. Scott? How's it going, Matt? Yeah, we're uh, Colgate Maroon News. We're both juniors at Colgate. Um, so we were wondering, um, so you probably don't pay much attention to this, but Colgate's been getting a lot of attention on the national scale. Um, and like this year, you guys have been consistently top 10 in the net rankings. Um, and you're like a high scoring team, top scoring team in the country. And you guys have been a popular upset pick for many bracketologists. So I was just wondering how it feels to be recognized nationally and to be getting all this national attention. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the bracketology, it's funny when when you're not in the NCAA tournament, you got nothing else to do and you're spending a lot of time watching all the pundits and, and enjoying the fan, fanfare. When you're in it, you have no idea what anybody's saying. So I think it speaks to our guys and their experience and, and the history, meaning like how we've performed in the past and over the last four years that people are saying, oh, man, this is a really good team. They might be able to win. And so I think that's uh, nice for our guys. The, the net ranking is, I mean, you guys are smart guys there. If you if you're studying at Colgate University, obviously it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a, you know, a, a mathematical outlier um, because of, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have non-conference games. Army and Navy did have a few non-conference games. They did well in those non-conference games, you know, Navy beating Georgetown, Army beating Buffalo, who's a good team playing Florida really close. Um, and then we beat, 
we, you know, we beat army three out of four times and only lost by two and army beat Navy. And so, you know, as you run the, as you run the algorithm, it, 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 it gives, it spits you back out something that, you know, doesn't necessarily identify what, what everything else that everybody looks at in the country. So it's been interesting to have those conversations, you know, across the country, whether it's the wall street journal or uh, Yahoo sports or whoever it is, that's kind of talking about the scheduling in the net. Um, you know, obviously I don't think it, it affected the seating very much um, for the NCAA tournament and, and uh, it'll be in, in what's been a crazy year. It'll be a little bit of an asterisk star about, um, you know, a trivia question, trivia pursuit. Scott, you know, the, you should look up the history of trivia pursuit if you don't know it already, specific to Colgate University, Scott. All right, we've got time here for, for one more question. Um, Scotty Borderline. Yeah, hey, Coach, I hope you're doing well. Uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on Moses Moody's game, just from what you've seen on tape. And then <laughs> Jalen Williams in the front court, he's a, a freshman who's made a pretty big impact for Arkansas, but he has, hasn't been playing lately. Yeah, I'll start with Williams, obviously, you know, gives them another, you know, dynamic uh, talent at his size, at his, at his athletic ability. You know, he's shown some signs of being able to step out and make a shot. Um, you know, the rim protector, uh, the true big guy, I think that he's got a bright, bright future ahead of him. Uh, the, the other guy, um, you know, he, I mean, he's a, a special talent. Uh, and I think as you look at guys who are, you know, prospective lottery picks, you know, it's often based on their potential um, because of athletic ability and size and so many other things. I, I think that, you know, as we study Moody, he's, he's just a terrific basketball player. I mean, not only is he dynamic in scoring at three different levels and have that size and length, but he just understands the game. You know, he reads the defense. He can get you when he, when he sees you off balance, he, he, he he's not predetermining what he's going to do and relying on the, you know, the, the physical tools that he does have, you know, he's, he's seeing what's the defense is giving them and how they're playing them and, and taking advantage of those things. So for a young guy, I, I, I think, you know, the way I watch the game and, and have a passion for the game, he's, he's an extraordinary player. Thank you. All right. Thanks everybody for joining us coach. Thank you as always.